What's up, freaks? It's Steve Eckert from Peak Physique, personal training bootcamp and boxing in Nanuet and Suffern. This is Steve Says, episode number 68. We're going to go over some crazy stuff today, some things really never been talked about. I guarantee that other businesses, especially other fitness type businesses, are afraid to talk about. We're going to be going never before revealed Peak Physique's business secrets. We're going to get that in just a second, pulling up on the second screen. Making sure our sound check is good. If you have any questions, comments, put them down there below in the comment section. Let's talk about it. So we are good. We are up and we are rolling. If you have questions, comments, put them down there. Never before revealed Peak Physique's business secrets. Basically, how is Peak Physique still in business? How are we still in business? This today is going to be the most real, raw, transparent as it gets. No holds barred discussion that we've ever had on Steve Says, and, and we've gone deep before here, but today we go fucking deep, deep to the bone, to the DNA, to the soul of the average Rockland County or average American business owner, high achiever, or whatever you want to call it. It's Steve Says, episode 68. You know some people will hate, but most can relate. We're bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This week is how is Peak Physique still in business? How do we keep doing what we are doing for over two decades? What's the secret to our success and with, with ridiculous client results? And what's our secret to success in business? Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your health, your family, and your finances so you can stop being a little bitch Get your shit together and start living life on your own fucking terms. Let's do this. Let's get rolling. If you have any questions, comments, put them down there below. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We're going deep today. We're going deep today. We're talking about transparency to the, to the deepest level. We're talking about going places that the general person is afraid to go. The general person is afraid to talk about, especially in the, as business owners and in a gym world. Forget it. It's just untalk. It's just not talked about. Let's do it. We're, we're talking about business transparency. Now, now let, let's get into this. Let's get into this. And if you, again, if you have questions, comments, put them down there below. We're talking about business transparency. We're talking about morals and ethics. And of course, we're talking about this in business. But this, everything you know that we talk about in, in Steve Says has to do with fitness, has to do with business, has to do with success in all areas of your life. Not just weight loss, not just, but, but also with your family, with your friends, in your own business, at your job, whatever it is, in your career. So we're going to get right into it. We're, gonna, we're not going to play any freaking games here. We're going to get right into it. We're going to go right to the dirt. Right to the dirt. Down deep to the dirt. And I'm going to ask you a few questions. So let me ask you a question. Why is it that some businesses, and you could say whatever ones you want to put in that category, some businesses don't need to fight to be the, the cheapest business in the world? Why is it? Why is it they don't have to compete on a price and don't have to go around just saying, oh, we're cheaper, we're cheaper, we're cheaper, we're cheaper. Why is it that some businesses can do that? Now, we're talking about in general. And then we're going to also apply all this stuff into your everyday life. Why is it that some businesses don't need to talk shit about other businesses? Why is it that some people don't need to talk shit about other people? Why is it that some businesses call other businesses trying to get their information Trying to find out how they how they run a business, how they do things. Like motherfucker, just go hire us, hire hire me. I mean that business. We're talking about that business, right? We're talking about just situation, a situation, right? You got me. Wink, wink. So why is it that some businesses have to like go on Facebook and see, oh, who are members of this business? Let's contact every single one of them and try. That's going to be our marketing strategy. That's going to be the foundation of our business. We're going to go and contact all these members of this other business. Or let's call them up on the phone. Why is that some businesses do that? Why is it that some businesses don't have to gossip and lie about their competitors or other businesses? Why is that some businesses don't have to do that? Why is it that some businesses don't have to copy every single thing other businesses are doing. Why is it? It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. Why do some businesses don't have to do it and some businesses do have to do all this stuff? And we're going to go over this list again because I want this stuff to sink in. So I hope you have time. We're going to have some fucking fun here. We're going to have some fucking fun. We're going to go deep. We're talking about the things that 
the shady ass world out there doesn't want to talk about, but the things that go on on a daily basis, that's what we're talking about. Why is it that some businesses have to, have, their only strategy of their foundation is to try and find prospects or clients from other businesses? That's all they have. That's their whole game plan. Why is it? I suspect, and, and why do some businesses don't need to do any of this stuff? And I suspect that the answers are in those questions. Like, think about it. Why do some businesses don't need to do any of that? And why do some businesses need to do all of that? Need. Like, that's their foundation. We're going to go over these things many, many times. Let's go back. Let's, let's repeat those. Why do some businesses not need to undervalue themselves? Why do some businesses not need to talk shit about other businesses? Why do some people not need to talk shit about other people? Why do some businesses not need to go call other businesses up and... Find out how they do things. Find out what their promotions are, how they do things, what they schedule, whatever else. Whatever the fuck else. Why is that some businesses don't have to contact other businesses' clients as their only source of generating leads or generating customers? Why is that some businesses don't need to gossip and lie about other businesses and make shit up? Why is it that some businesses don't need to copy every single thing that other businesses do? Why is it that some businesses have their own actual strategies and systems and tactics other than everything we just remember. Why is it? It doesn't make sense. And again, I just said, I suspect that the answers are in those questions themselves. I get, I suspect that that, that question answers it. Why? Like, think about it. Why would you not need to do any of that stuff? Then let's think about it. So if you didn't do any of that stuff, you would think, because obviously Peak Physique is one of those businesses, right? Everything that we stand for is one of those businesses. Every, every, side business that we run, everything we do, everything we operate, operates that way. So how could you possibly not have to do any of that stuff and still stay in business for almost 10 years, 10 years as a physical location? How is it that you, you don't do any of those tactics? Like those are like, right? That's like business one-on-one doing all that stuff, right? You're like you need to lower your value and lower your prices. You need to talk shit about your competitors and other business, right? That's the way you're going to survive, right? You need to, you know, call other businesses up and pretend you're a customer to try and get information on them. You need to contact other businesses' clients. You need to gossip and lie and cheat and fucking steal about other businesses or your competitors. You need to copy everything that all your other businesses or all your competitors are doing, right? You need that stuff to survive, right? So how is it? It's, it's, it boggles my fucking mind. How is it that Peak Physique doesn't need to do any of that stuff? Yet. Yet. We're in business actually in a location for almost 10 years and then another eight or nine years before that in home, in a dungeon in Suffern. How is that possible? It doesn't make sense. Like we don't, you don't, in your life, in your business. Now let's talk about in the context of just your life. You don't need to follow that side that we're talking about over here about doing all that shady, grimy ass sleazeball stuff. If you foundation your life on that, you're just fucked. You're just fucked. That's nothing that's sustainable. So I'm giving you business advice. I'm giving you life advice. Like, it's it's so easy. And so if, if you don't need to do any of that stuff, how is it that Peak Physique or any other business is able to donate and raise tens of thousands of dollars for charities and fundraisers? Yes, you heard tens of thousands of dollars donated and raised for dozens and dozens of fundraisers throughout the year. How is it possible without doing any of those strategies and tactics, right? Those are those are strong foundational business tactics that you need to do all that grimy, slimy shit that, you know, people do. And by the way, by saying, why do some businesses not need to do that? We just narrowed it down to about 0.000001% of people out there. But that's besides the point. That's a whole nother episode. Why is it that some businesses are able to offer free services every single week? Like maybe take, for instance, like a free boxing class on a Thursday night at 6.15 in 90 White or in Suffern. Why is that some businesses are able to offer a free service every week, not a one-time thing, like forever, for almost 10 years straight? So do the math on that. Do the math on that. 10 years, 52, that's over 500 and something hours of free services over the last 10 years. If, if you just did one hour a week. Think about that. How are some businesses able to do that when they don't follow all those sle sleazy, grimy business tactics? You know, that's a business world, you know? It's a cutthroat world. It's cutthroat industries out there, right? Why are some businesses able to stay actually a, a physical location open for coming up on 10 years? 
and even running before that for an additional eight years before that, come about 19 years now, out of the car, out of the dungeon. How are you able to stay? How can a business like, say, for instance, maybe Peak Physique or just any business? Seriously, I'm, ta- I'm, not, I'm talking about, of course, obviously our business, but just in general. Think about it. Just think in business and in life. Use this stuff to fucking in life also. How is it that you, you don't have to follow all those tactics and still stay in business in, in over 10 years? And paying rents in over 10 years. How is it that some business could be the only privately owned fitness center. And probably the only privately owned company that has multiple locations within one county here in Rockland County. Without doing those sleazy tactics. I don't understand. I thought you need to do those tactics, right? That's how you do business. That's like business unethics 101, isn't it? That like grimy, slimy motherfucker shit, right? Isn't that how you do it? I don't understand. How is it that a business cannot do that type of stuff and have more five-star reviews, get more results, more case studies, more before and after pictures, more transformations, more life changes than not just any other like, like-minded like business in the county, but any all the other like-minded businesses in the county combined? How is it that you could possibly pull that off without re, you know, re, re, resorting to those Slime ball tactics. It's impossible, right? How is it that you, we can even constantly fly on a, on a, almost a monthly basis out to California with Bedros Koulian, who's the, the author of the Man Up book, CEO of the top fitness franchise in, in the country, and partner up with him at least once per month doing business coaching, partnering up with him doing business coaching, coaching other businesses, not just fitness businesses, but from all industries, from all over the world. How is that possible without doing these business tactics that we need to do, that 99.999999% of businesses feel they need to do? How is this possible? It's mind-blowing. I can't comprehend it. I, I just can't comprehend it. How is it possible that certain businesses cannot do this stuff and still stay the top training center or business in Rockland County or the busiest private training center or business in Rockland County. How is that fucking possible? I can't come, I can't wrap my head around this. How could you possibly survive without having to do all those things? And let me repeat, let me recap what we're talking about, those things. Like, why is it that some businesses don't need to lower their value and degrade themselves? Why is it that some businesses don't need to talk shit about other businesses? Why is it that some businesses don't need to call other businesses to pretend they're a, a client or a customer as information? Why is it that some businesses don't need to poach other businesses, members, or clients? Why is it that some businesses don't need to gossip or lie about other businesses? Why is it that some businesses don't need to copy every single thing that other businesses do? Why is that? And you're able still to donate tens of thousands of dollars, still able to have a free services every week for almost 10 years, still able to stay in business for over 10 years, still able to get more reviews, results, testimonials, still able to be called upon to go and train business owners on business from all industries from all over the world in California. How is that possible without doing these sleazy tactics? I just can't wrap my fucking head around it. So obviously we're talking about specific businesses like our own, but again, also think about just business in general and your life in general, even above that is where your life is. And I'll tell you one thing, this is, it's not like, these are all just facts. This, this is not, it's not bragging if it's true, right? So how, I'm just confused that a company can survive without doing all these sleazy tactics. Yes, I know, we're talking about some deep stuff here and you might be getting a little uncomfortable listening to this because you know that either maybe yourself or some places that you do business or some people you might know resort to these tactics. And that's a lot, that's a majority, that is the majority, I'll tell you that. But that's also why 50% of business go out of, out of business within like the first, what is it, five years. And then 50% of that or 80% of that goes out of business within the next five years. That's just the way it is. How is it that a small, locally owned, private company is able to do all this? And donate so much money and generate so much money for donations for charities and fundraisers. And, and, be, and end up coaching other business owners from worldwide. I don't get it. You know How? I'm going to give you the secrets and the fucking answer. It's so simple. To to start off, it's by not being a fucking scumbag. By having actual business ethics and morals. By constantly educating yourself and growing and learning and implementing and teaching and paying forward. And donating to different charities and raising money for different charities. You can't build a business off of a shady scumbag fucking foundation. 
It's just not sustainable, and it's also not worth it, and it's just being a fucking douchebag. So the number one rule in how is a business able to do this is by don't be a fucking scumbag. It's it's so simple. It's like the secrets revealed to the world, the peak physique secret revealed to the world, don't be a fucking scumbag. Now, some more of our secrets is peak physique is a personal development program just as much as it's a weight loss program. We tell you you're coming in to lose weight, and guess what? We lied to you. You're coming in. We're going to dig deep inside your fucking mind, change your way of thinking in your mindset, make you more positive, make you happier, and make you a better family member, make you a better team member at work, probably help you make more money in the process at your job, getting promotions, and working better, working harder, more structured, more disciplined. Oh, and by the way, you'll still happen to get in the best fucking shape of your life. Ridiculous results in fitness and weight loss and strength and conditioning. The other secret is we base this off of a military foundation. Marine Corps motto is Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Always faithful is basically the politically correct way of saying don't be a fucking scumbag. Don't be a fucking scumbag. Always faithful. Semper Fidelis. The core values of the Marine Corps, we've gone over this before, but it's worth going over again. The core values of the Marine Corps are honor, courage, and commitment. And that's exactly how we run our business. And we don't break that for anything or anyone. You know, they're, 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 it's all ethics. What are ethics? What are, let's talk about business ethics or just ethics in general. Ethics are a system of moral principles. Ethics are rules of conduct that are recognized in respect to a particular class of human actions or a group or a culture. Think about it. That can't, that, you can't, you fit that right into a business when you're talking about ethics. It's like made for a business. Ethics are moral principles, even for an individual. So not just on a group level, but also an individual level. And we require this from every single person that we interact with on both our team and, and members. That's just the way it is. Ethics is also, I think on a philo philosophical level, a, a branch of philosophy dealing with values relating to human conduct with respect to the rightness and wrongness of certain actions and the good being, the, you know, the goodness and the badness of the motives and ends of such actions. That's the definition. That's a philosophical definition. The rightness and wrongness. The goodness and badness of motive, motives and motivations. So all those things we talked about, about the way that most businesses run their operation, there's zero ethics involved. Zero. All the stuff that I mentioned in the beginning. I'll run it back again in case you forgot. But ethics also means belief. Goodness, honor, honesty, integrity, morality, standards, values, having some fucking character. How about that? Ethics are concerned in individuals' moral judgments, and it's really about right and wrong. It comes down to so simple, a.k.a. Semper Fidelis, a.k.a. Always Faithful, a.k.a. Don't be a fucking scumbag. So, ethics, decisions made, you know, taken within any business or organization or your life or your job or with your family th that are made, can be made by like groups or individuals, but whoever makes them will be influenced by the ethics and the culture of the company or the family or the job. So all those slime ball things that, you, that I mentioned in the beginning, and I'm going to repeat them again and again and again, so you make sure you can start sinking in and start looking around. Start thinking about things you hear on Facebook and comments and things you're like, wow, that is a slimy scumbag motherfucker right there. Because I'll tell you one thing, you'll never hear this ugly bald white guy that needs to shave talking shit about anyone. You'll never hear this, except in a sarcastic, fun way, that's because I talk a lot of shit. But I'm talking about talking really serious and talking shit about someone. You'll never hear this. Bald, ugly, white guy that needs to shave, talking shit about another business. No matter how slimy or backstabbing they are, the people or businesses that have done you dirty and done you wrong, you'll never hear one single bad word out of my mouth about those people and those businesses' scumbaggery. You just won't hear it. I don't have time for that shit. We're too busy being ethical with morals and being fucking awesome and getting results Amazing, right? Amazing. What there's really supposed to be time for. Now, this is all just transparent. It's just all about being transparent. This is what this is all about. Transparency. We also do it by not being afraid to tell our story. Not being afraid to tell the truth about where we, where we come from and what our lives are like. We put ourselves out bullshitting, pretending to be something else 
editing ourselves, hiding behind some facade and some bullshit where it's all just fake, fakeness and, and, and the, the scumbaggery we're talking about. But also, one thing, another thing, like being fully, fully transparent about what, what makes the difference when you're talking about ethics. When you talk about those businesses that follow those, that scumbaggery and the ones that don't. Sometimes the ones that don't do all those things also need to make the tough decisions. Even sometimes the unpopular decisions that are to best serve their team, their customers, their clients, their family, the people in their sector. Sometimes they have to make the unpopular decision. Sometimes they make the tough decision because you know it's for the better good of the people around you, for the business, for the family, for the clients, for the staff, for the team members. And if that means parting way with team members and staff, it might mean parting way with clients. The, the, the businesses that are following these ethics, they're willing to make those tough decisions and even part way with, with clients and members that don't fit into that culture or you, that don't fit with it. They're not just going to be those scumbags that will just bring in toxicity and, and ruin the culture and ruin the experience for everyone else. It just won't fucking happen. It's also what having something to stand for. Those businesses that are over there on the other side stand for absolutely fucking nothing. They stand for being scumbags. That's what they stand for. They have no core values. They have no proclamations of what they're about or what they stand for. They have no manifesto about who they are, what they're all about. They might have some, what's those company things they have? I don't even know that, that, that statement. They might have a mission statement which is fucking pure bullshit. It's something they copy and paste off of some www.scumbagbusinessowners.com or something like that. But you need to, there needs to be something that you stand for. There needs to be core values. There needs to be manifestos, proclamations, promises of what, what you're about, what you stand for. So like these things that we stand for, we want to be manifested. We want this shit to be soaked up and instilled in the fucking bones and the soul and the DNA of every person that we interact with as both team members and clients. Every fucking situation that we encounter, every conversation that we have, every room we enter, every scenario we want to to soak this up. And for me personally, that comes down to five things that I want to instill in people that are around me. Part of what what I stand for, and what I want impact I want to have on people, and that's discipline, energy, action, confidence, and fucking freak. What do those mean? Discipline means having structure, having control, control of the situation, having a strategy, being fucking awesome is discipline. Getting your shit together is discipline. Trusting the process is discipline. Energy. What is energy? Energy is enthusiasm and passion. Waking people the fuck up. Shaking them the fuck up when they need it. Like this message right now might be waking you the fuck up and shaking you the fuck up. Realizing the people you're surrounding yourself or realizing that I'm talking about you. Action. What is action? To move people. Get them to move. Get off your ass. Push people. Pressure people. Get them to walk the walk. Get them to create shit. Motivate them to move. Motivate them to stop being a little bitch and to make shit happen. Figure it out. Confidence is preparation. Confidence is having the confidence that you will figure it out, that you can figure it out, no matter what situation you get yourself into, and being proud of who you are, which leads into the fucking freak. Be unique. Be yourself. Live life on your own fucking terms. March to the beat of your own fucking drum, and don't give a fuck what any of that 99.9999% of the scumbags do, or think, or say, or try to drag you through the mud. Who gives a fuck? Because you have those morals and those ethics. You don't even think twice about that shit. You just keep rocking on, being fucking awesome, being fucking awesome, getting your shit together, stopping a little bit, not giving a fuck, wake the fuck up, shake the fuck up, make shit happen, and trust the process. That's what it's about. So that's the answer. Those are the secrets to why some businesses don't need to do any of that stuff. I just I just shared the deep secrets of why Peak Physique doesn't need to do that, or why certain businesses don't need to do that stuff. Because, again... What we were talking about, do what stuff, just to recap it, about why do some businesses not need to undervalue themselves and underserve themselves and underserve their clients by just saying, oh, we're the cheapest in town. Why do some businesses not need to talk shit about other businesses? Why do some businesses not need to call other businesses and be all shady and lie and bullshit? And why do some businesses not need to try to poach other businesses' members and clients and call them up and send them little Facebook messages. Hey, we got a cheaper price over here. Why does some business not have to lie, gossip, cheat, and steal 
in the, in the, in the business world? Why does some business not have to copy everything other businesses do? And then again, those same businesses that donate to do that, how are they able to donate and raise tens of thousands of dollars to dozens of charities and fundraisers? How are they able to offer free services every week for 10 years? How are they able to stay in business for 10 years? How are they able to be the only private company in the county with multiple locations? How are they able to get more reviews, more results, more case studies, more testimonials, more transformations, more before and after pictures than not only any other like-minded business in the county, but all like-minded businesses in the county combined? How is that possible? How is it that they, that, that a business that doesn't do any of that slimy tactics able to go and coach other business owners from all industries from all over the world and make them successful and turn them into multi-million dollar businesses? How is it possible? And I just told you how. It's by having to stand for something, having ethics and morals. And overall, it's by not being a fucking scumbag. So don't be a fucking scumbag because you are fucking awesome. No excuses.